In this video, we're going to talk about how we can use Python in order to find passwords. Now, in a prior video, we talked about how to use Python in order to generate hashes of a password uh, and then use that hash to store securely and later match up to other password requests in, that might come up to it. That hashing process in general is a one-way process and cannot be defeated. It goes one way and only one way, and you can't undo it. However, it is possible with many passwords to essentially guess at how those passwords might work. And that's what Python comes in as really handy with. So let's take a look at how this might work. As we saw in a prior video, we were able to create a hash uh, using the crypto library in Python. Uh, we took the password and we took a salt and then we hashed it using various hashing types such as MD5, uh, Blowfish, uh, SHA-256, and SHA-512. And if we use the same salt that was for a specific password, then the ultimate hash would come out to be exactly the same as what we might see in the Etsy shadow file. And therefore we were able to confirm whether the password was correct or not. Well, that process, like I said, is a one-way process. However, that doesn't stop us from guessing about how it might work. And that's how automation comes in extremely handy in this process. For instance, there are out on the internet what's called a dictionary file. Dictionary files are passwords that have been found online commonly and are oftentimes ordered by how common those passwords are. We can look up here uh, is one example set, uh, out on GitHub called Seclists, and this is the 10 million most common passwords in use on the internet. Now we have the full list right here, or we can go ahead and we can find say the top 100. If I look at this list very briefly, we'll see that there are some very simple passwords, such as one, two, three, four, five, six. I, in theory, this means that the most common password found in computer breaches out there on the world, uh, the most commonly found password is one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, even though I can't reverse the hash, I could, however, guess to see if one, two, three, four, five, six is the password that somebody might be using on their account. And once I can go ahead and see the Etsy shadow file, such as this right here, then that gives me everything that's necessary to be able to find out what their password actually is, assuming it's one of those words that's in my dictionary file. So let's see how this would work. Starting off again by importing the crypt library. And in this case, I've created a function called test password. This function takes three different items in. First, it takes the hashed password or the password that I'm trying to break into. Next, it takes a string known as the algorithm and salt. And if we look back at the Etsy shadow file, that is the first portion of the, of the hash right here right all the way up until the third dollar sign. And then lastly, we have a plain text password or a password that we are guessing to see if that is the correct password. As we did before, we're gonna go ahead and use the crypt.crypt method in order to encrypt our plain text password with both the algorithm, which in this case is SHA-512, and the salt that, that is passed into it and we store that in a variable called crypted password. We then compare, is the crypted hash the same as the previous hash? And if so, return true. Otherwise, say it's false and we'll come back to it later. All right, so that's our first function. Our second function opens up the dictionary file. So we are going to download one of those files from the list and we're going to go ahead and open it up and then read that in so that we can then loop through it and attempt every single password in that 10 million password list. Finally, down here on line number 33, we start off by 
opening the dictionary file. In this case, I'm only opening a top 10. I'm only doing 10 because if I have problems while I'm troubleshooting this, I want to have a small subset to work with. Once I'm sure the script is working, I could then change that to the top 100, top 1000, or top 10 million. I then prompt the user for the full hash as well as the algorithm and salt. And then lastly, I create a for loop that looks through every single line in the, pa in the password dictionary, tests whether it was the correct password or not, and then prints out if a match was found. Let's go ahead and try this. So I'm going to start the run. And it starts off asking for the hashed password. For that, I'm going to come back to my terminal here and I'm going to grab, say for test user one, everything between the two colons there. Copy. Back to Visual Studio Code and paste it in. Enter. It then asks me for the algorithm and salt. And yes, I could have actually had it pull from the hashed password. Um, however, I haven't gotten to that point yet. So the algorithm and salt is this right here, everything up until the third dollar sign. So again, copy and paste. And what it's going to do now is it's going to go through that top 10 list and it's going to attempt every single password that's in there against this pass against this hash to see if it can find it. And as we see here, yes, it found it pretty darn quickly. Now I intentionally chose the password QWERTY because it was a weak password. And if I come back up here to the list here, I can actually see that's number four in the list. Yeah, definitely not something that I would want to use in a production environment. But still a fun process for us to have while working with Python.